emigrate abroad. Grazie, caro collega. La... Thank you, colleague. Now, Mrs Evans for two minutes. Thank you, President. The Council meeting will take place less than two weeks after the Treaty of Lisbon comes into force, and we have, as the Minister said, been through a long and difficult process to reach this point. But many of us feel that we have missed a critical opportunity. There is still a missing link, a vital democratic element in the relationship between the EU and the people of Europe, and that is the sub-state or regional level of government. Many constituents feel that Europe is as distant, as distant as it ever was, and we have to address this urgently. Not all of us had a referendum and the opportunity to give our views on the future development of Europe, yet there are things happening across the EU that have a direct impact, impact on our work in facing the challenges before us, and all of those policy issues that have already been mentioned – employment, social rights, economic regulation, fighting terrorism, peace and justice, and I'm proud to speak, incidentally, as chair of the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament in Wales. We are weeks away from the Copenhagen summit, the biggest challenge of all. Up to 80% of mitigation and adaptation policies will be implemented at the local and regional level, and many regional governments, like the government in Wales, have been leading the way in adopting radical policies to combat climate change, this is where any international agreements made will be delivered. So we must look beyond the member state level to the peoples of Europe. On Sunday, December the 13th, over 150 municipalities in Catalonia are holding referenda on independence from Spain. How is the EU responding to this? Will this be on the Council agenda? I very much doubt it, but it should be. Europe is changing, and I hope that the new president will recognise and respond to this. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. Now for one minute, 30 seconds, Mr. Van Dalen. Thank you, voorzitter. Thank you, President. I think the Swedish presidency deserves a big vote of thanks for all the efforts it's undertaken over the last few months. It's been a bit like